Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully having an amazing day. 2024 as well as 2025 will see the release of a ton of new games for PC and consoles, but also lots of new hardware as well. The PlayStation 5 Pro, of course, is going to release later this year, but on the PC side, things are not any less exciting. We have NVIDIA's RTX 50 series to look forward to, plus perhaps one of the biggest releases for many PC users, and that is Ryzen 9000, as well as other Zen. 5 based products and in this video you've probably guessed from the title i want to talk to you guys about the release dates and timings that i'm hearing from various sources regarding the release date of zen 5 that was a bit of a mouthful and also a few other updates to boot we'll get right into it after this quick message from the sponsor of the video if you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So first things first, actually, a small update in terms of the EGISA versions. Now, of course, these are basically AMD's BIOSes, which will be for various platforms. And in this particular case, it has actually been updated where AMD specifically reference the Ryzen 9000 series. Now, I want to give credit to HXL or 9550 Pro on Twitter, who has made this discovery. I follow them, and I would suggest you guys do the same as well if you're on Twitter. There's not a huge amount to really discuss here. It's basically an update which, again, references this. It doesn't pr provide exactly a uh, comprehensive list of the specifications like the core counts or any of that stuff. But what it does do, of course, is, well, provide confirmation that the products actually exist. And the fact that the naming scheme, unsurprisingly, is going to be the Ryzen 9000 series. But that's the smallest thing I want to talk about in this video. But let's focus now on the release dates. Now I'm going to read this out from my list because I have quite a few here to go through. So Granite Ridge, which of course will be the Ryzen 9000 series Zen 5 for the AM5 platform, that was another big mouthful, uh, that will release in July from what I'm told. Strix Point shall be August and then Cheerin slash Cheerin Dense, that will be in September. So again, that's this year, so 2024, July, Granite Ridge, Strix Point, August, Turing, um, September. CES, which of course will be next year, I'm hearing will be Fire Range, Kraken Point, the Halo Strix products, which of course we've heard a lot about. Those are basically Sarlacc, so those are going to be higher end variants, which will offer a crap ton of gaming juice. And then Granite Ridge X3D. So just to quickly clarify, it's not too surprising that we're going to see the Granite Ridge lineup um, essentially segmented into two separate launches. So the vanilla parts, of course, are going to release this year. And then the X3D parts, much like we've seen with other launches like Zen 4, for example, those will launch later on. Um, I've basically run this by now a couple of other sources, and all of them have told me that essentially... Maybe with some small fluctuation, but those do seem to be the release dates that AMD are aiming for. Now, I know what you're going to say. Well, what about RDNA 4? <laughs> and I would say, oh boy, you're right. That's an interesting one. Honestly, I am still hearing two totally conflicting dates on that. I would love to tell you guys which one is true. Um, I have a couple of sources who are swearing to me that RDNA 4 is going to release next year, and that will be announced basically again at CES. However, I also have a larger number of sources who are telling me it's going to be this year, and we can probably expect some type of announcement at the same time we see everything else announced, which of course will be Computex. Honestly, I do not know which is true, because each source tells me they are 100% certain <laughs> that they are right regarding RDNA 4, and um, yeah, I've actually had everyone agreeing with the other stuff in terms of release dates, but I can't get anyone to agree with RDNA 4. So I don't know if people are just getting confused between the mobile releases, but they tell me they are not. This is desktop. So I don't know if AMD are basically changing things internally. I don't know what's going on. 
from a logical standpoint and i want to stress i am guessing this is a guess this is not what i'm being told this is a guess this year would make more sense because we've seen a lot of updates that have been popping up in various you know the the linux driver repos and all that crap so from that perspective it would make more sense and it seems that the architecture from what i'm hearing anyway is largely done um, i don't really have a ton to add to the specifications for this product because we've basically you know i've leaked it um all the watts has leaked them and a couple of other folks have as well we're looking at 32 workgroup processors for the highest end variant which of course will be n48 as for the performance it's going to be a little bit faster in terms of raster anyway than 7900 uh, xt and there's not much more to say on the RDNA 4 situation. I will be very interested to see what the messaging is and also what AMD does in terms of, well, not only the pricing, but whether we see N31 and other products essentially phased out, you would assume so, because why wouldn't they? But I also had one source that tells me that there's going to be a rebranding of the highest end N31 products. I, I kind of am skeptical of that, but who knows? I will be also curious to see what AMD does in terms of the pricing um, for the Ryzen processors. I have I have had one source that are telling me that we could be looking at 899 for the vanilla chip, so that would be the 16 core 32 threads, which I'm assuming is going to be called the Ryzen 9 9950X. Um, but that is very preliminary pricing, and of course it will depend an awful amount on what's going on with Intel. So I wouldn't take prices at this stage with any level of certainty, quite frankly. Prices are, you know, typically thought of as kind of a range. It will be very interesting though to see what happens with AMD's decision on the pricing and also to see what goes on in terms of whether people buy the processors. So I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, so let me know down below or reach out to me on Twitter and so on. And also give me a follow there because I post memes and just kind of mess around a lot. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts because I, I think that the vanilla chips are gonna be very impressive. However, there's also a thing I feel with a lot of folks where it's like, Okay, let's just roughly say that six months later, the, van the vanilla chips will also live alongside the X3D chips. So the X3D chips will, roughly speaking, let's just make it really easy and say six months. Okay, well, if you say six months later, you can then have the X3D. It's like, if you already have like a, you know, X3D chip now for Zen 4, for example, do you really want to replace an X3D with a vanilla chip, even if hypothetically it's faster? I think a lot of folks are just going to wait. I'll be interested though. If you haven't jumped onto the AM5 platform, it makes it even harder as well because then you have to buy the motherboard. I I will be interested to see what happens. I suspect that uh, the Zen 5, um, what will it be called? The 9800 X3D? I don't know. That probably will be the sweet spot for many for gaming, of course, as always. And of course, you will, you know, go up the core count list if you want to do like video editing, image processing, that type of crap. So it will be very interesting to see how many people actually wait and then to see what the sales figures are for the X3D. And this is particularly true given there are some rumors anyway that the Ryzen chips are going to be bandwidth constrained, but then how much of a difference are the X3D parts going to make? Who knows? Anyway, again, with the whole IPC information, I'm still hearing so many different numbers between 20 and over 30% IPC, generation on generation. But what I will say is, even if the worst case scenario is true and it's like 20%, for a lot of people, I think it's kind of like one of those things, it's very difficult to upgrade and then you're going with the worst part. It's like if you owned like a, I don't know, like a, a 980 Ti, and then, like, the 1080 comes out, you know there's going to be the 1080 Ti, so I think a lot of people wait. Oh, and that's a nice segue, actually, to NVIDIA. This is just a very small thing. Um, so, you may recall I made a video just very recently talking about the release date of RTX 5090 as well as 5080. There seems to be a lot of reports now that NVIDIA are going to be pushing black, well, for gaming, this year, Q3, Q4. And I don't really have much to say other than one of my sources now tells me that this is true. They've spoken to a couple of AIBs um, and they have recently been briefed. There seems to be a little bit of conflicting information from one, whether it's Q3, 
but most are saying the target seems to be Q4. Of course, anything can happen. It could be like a paper launch. So for example, and I'm not saying this is true, I don't have the exact release month. So let's just hypothetically say NVIDIA could you know, do like a paper launch where like you have very small numbers available, technically speaking, in November, and then like they start to ramp up the inventory the um, you know, Q1 the following year or something. I will also be interested to see what actually goes on in terms of the uh, cut down of the various SKUs. The rumor is, of course, that GB202 um, is 192 SM. Assuming those figures are correct, that's what Copperdite 7 has been leaking. I've been hearing the same number of SM. So let's just assume that that is true. How many are they going to go for the 5090? And then will they, for example, go with like 160 SM, just an example, and then will we see the 5090 Ti launch six months later? I also will be very, very curious to see the pricing. If memory serves, I think it was like, was it, was it 1699 or 1599 US dollars for the, for the 4090? I think it was 50. It, I think it's 15, right? It's 15.99. Someone correct me down below and say, no, he's an idiot and say it was X. But I think for US dollars, it's 15.99. So are we going to see what? 18.99? <laughs> it's like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Nervous chuckle. Anyway, I think that's just about it for today's video, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.